Hi, I'm James Santiago from Universal Audio. I'm the senior product designer for the uh, UAFX pedals. So I'm going to take you to the first one, Starlight. And we're going to start by talking about the EP3. This is classic tape delay. Uh, we based this one off the 70s units, and there's three of them in there. So let's take a look at the pedal here. I'm actually on the A side. I've got the modulation control set to noon. That's where the original units would match in their sort of wow and flutter. I have the color at noon as well. That actually for this is the record level. And I'm using this division control. I will show you that. Uh, that would be mono quarter notes. So I'm actually on a setting where you can hear an offset quarter and a dotted eighth on the left and right side. <laughs> That's actually two different machines. So you've got an independent machine left and an independent machine right. Uh, even when I'm on the mono, because I'm in a stereo setup, it's still two different machines, but at least the times are synced. And you'll hear a little um, difference as the stereo pad goes out. So I'm going to turn up the feedback. And you'll notice the wash of the left and right. So what you just heard was a machine left and right at the same delay time. And what I was doing was increasing the feedback. And in order for these EP3s to get the right sort of cloud of repeats, you actually have to have the tape noise. So you can hear that when I was turning that feedback control up, the original sort of tape hiss sound was coming in and starting to get pushed into the delay line, which is what you want. And I was pushing the modulation up, which in this case isn't just a chorus effect. It's the wow, flutter and also increases the amount of uh, tape splice sort of artifacts and dropouts you'd hear. So you can hear, you start to hear this sort of um, rhythmic pattern happening because as it's dropping out, you start to get these little hiccups in the delay line. So let me talk about what's going on here on the toggle. Let me move you over to the B machine here. That is a machine that is not new. It's got a little bit of worn tape. It's a little darker, so. Let's listen to that, and I'll do the same thing with C. C is an even more worn machine. It's got a beat up tape, and the main categories being A is a practically new old stock machine I had. It also has a compressor circuit on the record head, so those those e, EP3s were just a little different. And then the B and C machines were the, an era a little earlier where they didn't have the compressor circuit on the um, record level and the record path to the tape. They had a warmer sound. So I'm going to play you the B, we'll go to C, and then you can hear how bright the A is in comparison. You're going to want to hear how that one's a little more wobbly, so let's pull the uh, on, flutter back. Listen to C. And take a listen to the A now. You can hear how A has that sort of classic little sort of attack on the top of the notes in a bright sound. Now the fun thing is they all repeat differently because each delay repeat actually goes back into the tape mechanism. So let's listen to the way B repeats and also hear the amount of wound wow flutter. And because we're in stereo, you can get a, a nice little um, ambient spread across your speakers. <laughs> Uh, I also like that one for more distorted stuff, but I would typically pull the modulation back and do something like this. You hear a... That's 
it has the warmth of that tape sound you want. The tape's a little crunchy. It gets a little distorted, which is what you want. Um, that gives you some of the stuff going on in the EP3. Uh, I love all three of the ABC different versions, but it just depends on what you're going for. And all of them have a sort of classic, unique uh, sound when you do the repeat. So the I'd say, let's just go to C and take a listen. If I just turn up the repeat, I'll play one note, and we'll, we'll leave you with the classic spaceship sounds. Everyone used to do. Let's talk analog DMM. This is what we consider analog delay, also known as bucket brigade delays. This is based on the original late 70s, early 80s units. Um, DMM, you probably figured that one out. Um, one of the coolest things about them is they have a, a really dirty repeat. So each repeat turns into this little fluffy cloud. You start to lose the top end of the note, and it becomes soft, almost like a reverb. So with longer uh, feedback times, I almost get this spacey reverb dark sound. And when you add the vibrato in, you get this little bit of movement. So let me just show you what that sounds like. Um, on the toggle here, uh, A, B, and C actually is A is for vibrato, B is none, and then C is a chorus. So let me show you what that does. So I'm also going to stay with the division control at the quarter and dotted eighth. <laughs> Now let's listen to my bra I, I leave it at noon. It's kind of dialed in for the perfect pitch wobble. Huh? <laughs> You can hear by that point in the delay repeats, it almost sounds like reverb. And now let's go over to the chorus side, and I'm going to pull this back a little bit. Um, one note, just like the original units, this control is really the depth. That the, the speed of it is already preset inside the hardware. <laughs> get a really wide sound with this one of the fun things about this unit is it deals uh, with a clock so if you pitch the clock around which is how delay time works you can actually create these sort of chord clouds so one fun thing I like to do is to let the feedback go and then play with the division control and the time knob uh, and create pads so let me go back into vibrato we're gonna make a long feedback um, and let's see what happens here You can do a lot of fun stuff with that. One of my favorite things is to just use it as a slapback. Um, let me just take this here, delay time all the way off, um, off or close to that. It, it sits at about 100 something milliseconds. I'm gonna take that off there and just one little repeat there. <laughs> mix it down a little bit and you have a little gain it's a single coils when you add a little bit of gain 
you get a nice little repeat, almost like there's reverb. And this kind of sound is um, typical, like if you, if you listen to a lot of Robin Ford, some of those guys, you don't really need reverb. Just a couple of these little repeats on this gives you the sound of almost reverb. So here we go. <laughs> Pull that back a little bit, and it's even nice in the stereo spread. If I take it out, you'll notice how sort of down the middle mono it is. With it. Lots of fun one to use. Great for clean stuff. Great for distorted sound because it gets out of the way. Uh, that's the analog DMM. Okay, let's talk precision delay. This is our studio delay where uh, what you put in is what you get out. So the repeated notes all sound like what went in. So we also call this digital delay in a way. Um, there's a, one extra thing about this one that's different than the others is that the modulation section is not part of the delay line. It's actually after the delay, so you have to imagine going into your studio processor and doing delays and then that feeding a second unit just for flanging and chorusing. So let me show you how that works. I'm going to stay with the quarter note dotted A sound so you get a little panning left and right. And I'm going to slowly bring in flanging. Uh, that's where the A mode is here. So let's go to A. I'm going to pull this back. Uh, the control itself uh, does speed, depth, regeneration, mix, delay time. And so it's doing a whole bunch of things, but all you have to do is move the knob and you'll get a bunch of classic sounds. So let me take you through the flanging. You can see by the end of that knob, you're starting to get that almost steel drum. The regeneration gets a little high, and you get it similar to like the police sort of flan sound. So B is off. Let's go to C, and we're going to do the same thing in a chorus setting. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell, but by the end there, I actually have it set up speed and depth wise to almost be like a full Leslie thing. Uh, that's totally on purpose, and that's kind of where I wanted to leave that at. So you could do these sort of pads and have it sound like this wobbly thing. So if I slowly fade into that, put a high feedback, I'm also going to play with the color. What the color does in this one is at noon, it's flat. If you push it higher, you're actually going to add bass and treble. So you get sort of the classic smiley V height sound. Going the other direction, it brings the highs and bass down. And you get this really sort of uh, mid-range centric sound. So it's fun for putting stuff in the loop and then sort of filtering it to play with sounds. So let's try that. <laughs> Thank you. 
There you go. One other neat thing about this delay is that it has a smooth transition from delay times. So if you use your tap tempo, what you won't get is a glide from delay times. So it will move the tempo of the delay line to the next one while the other one cross fades out. So let me show you how that works. So. Take the chorus off. There you go. That's some of the fun stuff in Precision. All right, let's talk bonus effects. If you registered your pedal already, you have the Cooper Time Cube. Uh, one of the coolest things about it is it's actually based on a garden hose to create the delay line. It was invented by the owner, the original founder of Universal Audio, Bill Putnam Sr. And let's just take a listen to it. It's got a unique sound to it, and, and it's a garden hose. What's, what's not fun about that? <laughs> It's going to keep going for a while. Uh, one of the coolest things about this one is the sound of the delay because it has a really unique filter to it. And it's got the longest delay time of everything in the pedal. It's about two and a half seconds. Uh, so let me let you hear what the filter is. We'll pull the delay time back a bit. Now on the toggle, I'm on B, which is sort of this mid filter. I'm going to put you to C and you can hear it almost has this tiny AM radio sound. Let me get you to A and it's a little flatter. Even the A has a nice soft quality to it. Now you can still color this stuff, but in a different way. These are actually EQ, so let me put you on B mode here. And you can hear that. So what you get is a standard bass and treble post the delay line. So if you want to play with the EQ a little bit more, you can use those to fine tune it. I'm also using the division offset again. That's the Cooper Time Cube. I hope you've enjoyed this. I'm James. Thank you.